Russ Niles reporting for Av Brief. We're with Brad Sirak. Uh, he is the current CEO of uh, Jeppesen Foreflight, and he was in charge of Jeppesen and Foreflight when they were part of Boeing. Um, tell me, Brad, what's changed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. A lot is changing, Russ. It's nice to nice to meet you. Um, yeah, I've been the CEO of these businesses for three years. I've been a customer of these businesses for thirty five years. I I uh, got my pilot's license. Well, started training when I was sixteen. Uh, learned on Jeppesen training. Never left the ground without Jep charts in the cockpit. Eventually, four flight came in. So this has really been a dream job for me uh, ever since I got the opportunity uh, to come into Boeing and, and lead these businesses. And now we've uh, we've taken the businesses and we've carved them out of Boeing and we're under ownership from a private equity firm. Uh, Toma Bravo is one of the, the leading software private equity investors out there. And um, we're, t we're continuing our mission. We're really continuing to drive the, the same innovations that we've been uh, doing for years, but uh, really in an, at an accelerated pace and with, you know, a well-funded uh, 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 owner that uh, that sees the vision the same way we do. Okay, well, I came into this interview with one principal question. How much are, pri are uh, fees going to increase? Because that's overwhelmingly <laughs> what our readers uh, want to know. I know. But, uh, but I have another question after you've dealt with this one. <laughs> okay, fair enough. No, it's under understandable uh, people's concerns, but that's not that's not our focus. Uh, uh, this isn't about raising prices. It's about um, continuing to innovate and drive value into the products. That's been our calling card from the beginning. That'll continue to be our calling card is is driving more more value into the product. So I I don't think people need to be worried. So there won't be an instant 30% increase uh, that, uh, that no, slams no people instant. in the pocketbook? and No, no instant 30% increase. It'll be standard standard price increases like we've been doing for for a while. No, no surprise. Okay, well, that, that's going to cheer a lot of people up. <laughs> 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 now, in, your, in the news release announcing all of this, um, it said that AI is going to play a huge role in uh, in shaping the future of both companies how is that going to work and uh, how do you uh, how do you perhaps ease the concerns of uh, people who may still be a little bit suspicious of ai and and what it can do for you yeah well i think i think we count ourselves among uh the the users of the product i fly with four flight every every week as do most of the the people who build for flight that's that's what's uh unique about our business is uh, a lot of our people are pilots we're of the industry that we serve and so we have i think we have the same same way of thinking about this as everybody else i would i would just point back to our history you know when you think about these two companies uh Jeppesen in particular turned 90 last year and in those 90 years we were founded in 1934 right in those 90 years we pioneered charts out of the gate. Captain Jepp invented the first aviation charts, turned it into the largest printing company in the world, and then started to take it digital. And that was before you had any iPads or anything like that. That was really, we helped create our own devices in the, uh, in the flight deck that we could digitize the charts on. And then we you know, worked with Apple with the launch of the first iPad and, and started to explore that technology and how the, the charts would work on the on the iPad. And I think there were similar worries back then about those mobile devices and their battery life and connectivity and and all valid, you know, challenges with new technologies. So we we have this history of really um safely and smartly uh innovating with new technologies and helping the industry adopt those technologies in a safe way. This company was founded on safety uh from the very beginning. It's the through line that runs through everything that we do. And so Anytime we look at a new technology, we really just extend our safety management system, which is quite a robust safety management system for what we do. Uh, we just extend it to uh, that new technology and we don't release anything until it's, it's something that we feel is ready for for production. And I think AI, we, we treat it the, the same way. When you look at our applications like ForeFlight, You'll notice there's a section if you go under settings, you can you can choose to enable Forflight Labs 
functionality. And that, that, those are areas where we're, you know, we have technology that we think is ready, but but may not be um, something that everybody wants. And we encourage our community of of uh, pilots out there to, to help us uh, explore that technology, give us feedback, uh, collaborating with our customers is a part of what got us here. So I think we're going to follow the same, you know, playbook with AI that we, we followed with every evolution in technology as, as new, you know, as new iPad capabilities come out, we look at ways to take advantage of it. So it's, it's just like that, but uh, we take it very seriously and, and we won't do anything that compromises safety or quality. What are we going to notice? Um, when uh, when AI takes hold, uh, I guess particularly on ForeFlight. Um, ForeFlight is the yeah. uh, is kind of like the interface between uh, between pilots and your company, right? They they are for the general aviation, you know, space. Just for some context, before I kind of answer your question on ForeFlight, just so everybody understands, our business is really the most has the broadest portfolio of technology and aviation of any any tech company out there, any aviation tech company, we serve uh, the general aviation community. And that's where people are familiar with ForeFlight. We're in business aviation as well. Uh, we're in uh, military aviation. So all of the military services, uh, domestic and uh, international uh, allied services utilize our uh, EFBs uh, as well. And then we have a big business in commercial aviation too. So we plan you know, millions of flights for the airlines and we operate uh, in the cockpit in the uh, control center uh, for the airlines. So we've got quite a, a range of understanding of a diverse set of missions across the aviation industry and and how this technology uh, comes to play. In general aviation uh, in particular, you know, that's that's a place where we think if we could bring what we do on the commercial side of aviation for the dispatcher who dispatches hundreds of, of flights and helps follow those flights with the pilot throughout their their uh, entire mission. If we can bring that level of uh, capability down to the private pilot in GA to help enhance safety, enhance situational awareness, support them in their flight planning uh, capability, support them with flight briefing, those are the kind of things that we're we're thinking about as GA pilots. You know, when I'm planning an IFR flight, I'm really thinking about how could uh, I gain you know better situational awareness during the planning process. How could I maybe utilize some of the AI capabilities to help me um, collect all the information that I I need to know, make better sense of all the notums that are out there. And when I'm executing the flight, it sure would be nice to have you know an extra type of flight following that can help update me as weather conditions change or traffic conditions change. Those are the ty types of things that we're we're thinking about now. And I think that's probably, you know, where you're going to start to see some of those features uh, become available. And, and like I said, we probably make those available in our labs section at first so people can who want to can try them and give us feedback and and then we'll just learn and evolve over time. When do you think uh, we're going to see some of the that capability? Well, we're again, yeah, we're we've been developing that capability now for quite a while. So I think you're going to start to see it uh, very soon. We already have some AI in our our products. You know, uh, you'll you'll have areas that it's enhanced our search capabilities inside the product. Um, areas that you know can help you uh, understand uh, a bit more uh, on the documentation side. So there's all already features that every release we we put into the product and and you probably you probably hadn't noticed that it was even the AI stuff uh you know that's helping you but you're, you're it's getting more intuitive when you search for things that it can uh it can help you find it i think we're going to start to to look at specific features that we we call out that that have AI enabling like i said probably in the briefing process is where we're we're focused on first and i think that's going to come out you know relatively soon all right. Well, thanks for spending some time with us today, Brad. Um, congratulations on your appointment to uh, to the top job. Congratulations on <laughs> your appointment you. for the continuation of your job, I guess. And uh, <laughs> four flights really important to uh, to the general aviation uh, uh, population, and uh, and we'll be watching it carefully. Thanks for explaining it all to us, and uh, and uh, and good luck with it. This has been Russ Niles well, thank you, reporting Rob. for Avbrief. Uh, thanks for watching.